it's also important to understand that cows exist as part of what is called a carbon cycle. That carbon has been cycling over the within the atmosphere of the Earth for billions of years. So this is what you get when you search the carbon cycle. I pulled up some of the most instructive images that I think will help talk about this. So you can see here, this is the actual numbers. So the red numbers are flux, and the blue numbers, I believe, are sinks, or at least this is a sink and this is a sink. So we're looking at vegetation. Vegetation stores, uh, this is in billions of metric tons, uh, 610 uh, soils, 1580. These are storage amounts of carbon dioxide. The oceans have 39,000. You can see there's a global carbon cycle. Carbon dioxide is released from the ocean. Carbon dioxide goes back into the ocean. Now, photosynthesis pulls carbon dioxide out of the atmosphere into plants. Plants also have respiration. The soil respires and actually releases some carbon dioxide back into the soil. Land use moves 1.6 into the atmosphere and fossil fuels move 6.3. Very small amounts. I'm not saying fossil fuels are a good thing necessarily, though um, there are arguments on both sides of that. Um, fossil fuels and land use, presumably that includes cows as well, are small contributions to the greater cycle. Well, some people would say, okay, but those small contributions are causing climate change. Okay, let's go to this one, which as you can see is from NASA. Um, if you see here, there is this one here that I pulled from NASA. I think this is the best carbon cycle graphic because it's clear that the red, uh, the red numbers here are flows. This is in petagrams. So thankfully they're using metric here, which is 10 to the 15th grams of carbon. And there's a pool and there are fluxes. So the earth's crust has um, 100 million petagrams, fossil fuels, 5,000 to 10,000 petagrams, the soils have 1,500 petagrams of carbon, meaning if you till the soils, you're releasing carbon in the atmosphere. This is the soil respiration and decomposition. That number, they say, is 58 petagrams going into the atmosphere every year relative to the burning of fossil fuels, which is 7.7. .7. Now, I don't think we should be burning particulate fossil fuels. I don't want to live in Beijing or Tokyo and breathe that air, but this is just talking about carbon dioxide. Volcanoes, a very small amount. Photosynthesis fluxing into plants. Plants storing 560 petagrams, deforestation and land use change, 1.1 petagrams going up. Uh, and just for the record, deforestation is not caused by cows. Deforestation is generally in Central America and South America caused by farmers who use cows to clear the land that they want to plant soy on. Because if you clear the land in uh, these parts of the developing world, the land is yours. So the land is not cleared for cows. The cows are brought in to help clear the land. And then the land is used to plant soy. Ocean uptake, 92. Ocean loss, 90. The atmosphere has 750. But it's important to note there is tons of carbon everywhere and this fluxing and going all over the place. And cows exist within this cycle. Cows contribute some of this to the burping process. Methane breaking down into carbon dioxide in the atmosphere, et cetera. But cows are not the only contributor. And in the United States, cows are a fraction of the contribution. Now, I think a lot of the misconception comes from an FAO report that was done in 2007 and then redone uh, about 10 years later or nine or eight or nine years later because there was a miscalculation. This is called Livestock's Long Shadow. And the problem with this report was manifold, but one of the main problems was that while there was a life cycle calculation for the amount of carbon that a cow releases into the environment, there was no life cycle calculation for what cars do. <laughs> and what was done was they compared worldwide as a percentage of anthropogenic carbon dioxide emissions, they compared the amount of carbon dioxide from a full life cycle of a cow, meaning how much it produces in methane, how much carbon dioxide is produced from all of the land, uh, all the equipment that is used to move the cows around their entire life cycle to what comes out of the tailpipe of a car. Well, we know that there's more carbon dioxide that can be attributed to a car than just what comes out of its tailpipe. Well, what about the carbon dioxide needed to make the roads that you drive the car? And what about the carbon dioxide needed to run the electricity for the plant that made the car, et cetera, et cetera? We know that electricity generation is one of the most significant contributors to carbon dioxide emissions, but that electricity generation to make the car was not accounted for in any of 
the life cycle analyses for cars. So the FAO was comparing apples to oranges. They were comparing a full life cycle for cattle, which we have done, and we know very clearly what cattle produce. They were comparing that to what was done just out of the tailpipe of an automobile. That doesn't sound like a fair comparison. And so they had to redo it when these oversights were pointed out. Yet, plant-based advocates will be very quick to point out that, oh, cows are a huge contributor. They contribute as much as transportation. False, false. And they contribute that methane as part of a cycle. This is not new carbon. Remember that the carbon produced from the back of an automobile is carbon that has been freed from the fossil fuels in the environment and is new carbon going into the atmosphere. Whereas the methane coming out of a cow, out of a cow's mouth was carbohydrates in the grass and plants that the cows ate that was fixed from the environment. So every bit of methane that comes out of a cow went into the ground and into plants before it came out of a cow. It's not newly created carbon dioxide. It's carbon dioxide that is part of the carbon cycle. Tell me again how cows, the most nutritious foods for humans, are causing climate change. I also found this very interesting data from the Northeastern Organic Farming Association. I need to confirm the actual location of this graphic, but this graphic is reflecting variations in annual changes in atmospheric methane concentrations from 1983 to 2009. Obviously, from 1983 to 2009, there are now more cows, more ruminants being farmed, but you can see here in parts per billion, the amount of methane has cycled all over the place and it's actually gone down. The last recorded reading here was 2009. There was really no association between the number of cattle or cattle production and the amount of methane in the environment. So again, to suggest that cows burping are creating a significant contribution to the methane in the environment is a pretty shaky position to take, yet Bill Gates wants to do it over and over and over as if it's canon.